Hello, this is Dr. Singhal from engineering class. As I mentioned that you will watch this video and complete a homework assignment that is posted on the Canvas website based on this video. So it's part of the chapter making the most out of how you taught and we are going to start after what we already covered in the class okay so let's begin okay so <clears throat> having professor help you and you being able to make effective use of your professor's time talent is an is a very important uh, part of your engineering education so we're going to talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> One thing we need to understand is the important roles a professor can play in your education. <clears throat> and in order to understand that role, you need to understand the characteristics professors have. And you can count on those characteristics. And then in, in any social interaction, interaction with professors is not a exception. There are behaviors to avoid and there are behaviors that make you a winner. So we'll talk about all those things. Okay. So these are the important roles your professors can play for you. One is they can guide you and teach you through one-on-one -on -one instruction that is as opposed to the big lecture you and your professors are together and he's teaching you and you're learning he or she <coughs> then academic advising career guide <coughs> career guidance and personal advice and monitoring your progress and hold you accountable for that progress give you benefit of doubt on the borderline grades help you find a summer job hire you on their research grant this will be in the research universities and serve as a reference for jobs interviews, graduate school, admissions, and all that. And nominate you for scholarships or academic awards. Okay, let's talk about value of one-on-one -on -one instruction. Best way for a novice to learn is to learn from an ex expert in one-on-one -on -one setting. And this method is called Socratic method. It was named after Greek philosopher Socrates, who was born in 470 BC. The main advantage of this method is the teacher can know immediately if the student is not understanding the subject being taught and make an effective course correction for the better learning of the student. Okay. So today, while entire engineering course cannot be taught using Socratic method, a student can take advantage of professor's office hours to get some one-on-one -on -one teaching. And the topics you are having a hard time learning, you can learn through one-on-one -on -one teaching during office hours. Whose responsibility is it to win over your professors? We need to ask a fundamental question. Whose responsibility is it to win over subordinates, peers, and superiors in one's life? Everybody has a life. Everybody has a subordinate, peer, and superior when they are in a job. Whose responsibility is to win them over? Obviously, the answer is that each individual themselves is responsible for winning over people in their lives. And professors are no exception in that sense. 
it is the responsibility of each student to win over their professors. Of course, professors will do the same, win over students and their superiors. So there are no exceptions, they are just like you. <clears throat> okay? There are six ways to make people in your life like you. This is one technique of winning people over, by right? make them like you. And you can use these six techniques with professors also. Become genuinely interested in other people. Smile. Understand that a person's name to him or her is the sweetest sound in their life. Be a good listener and encourage others to talk about themselves. Talk in terms of other person's interest. Make other person feel important and do it with sincerity. If you want to see an example, read the story of Mr. Nafo of Philadelphia in your textbook. In fourth edition, this is on page 123. Can you apply Mr. Neffel's story in your personal lives to win over superiors and professors in your life? See if you can do that. It doesn't hurt to try. <clears throat> Here are some of the characteristics of your professors. If you understood these, it could help improve your relationship with them. Professors believe that their area of technical specialty are important and interesting. And professors can guide you as how to get involved in this area of specialty. Okay. Now I do understand that professors believe that and sometimes they encounter students who don't believe that. That can frustrate professors and one advice given to me in one of the college in Oklahoma was that it is not necessary that the students will find your technical area important and interesting. So just understand that. So I understand that now. But if you understand that professors find their area important and interesting and you are interested in that then they can help you guide how to get involved in that. Professors chose an academic career or professional practice because they believe they are outstanding teachers. New newbies, new professors may have trouble in being outstanding teacher but in time they improve. In engineering especially uh, Industry career pays a lot more than the professors are paid. So it's pretty much true that most new professors who are choosing ac academic career and make, making less money per year uh, chose it because they like it. Professors think that they are knowledgeable and love to convey what they know to others. And these three characteristics, as a student, you can tap into these and you can advance your career and learning both by tapping into these three characteristics. Okay. Now, part of winning over is certain behaviors to avoid and certain behaviors to follow. So what are the behaviors to avoid? And this picture of a student sleeping conveys part of the one of the behavior, which is on the top. Actually, not on the top. So behavior to avoid: coming late to class. Avoid that. Yawning or sleeping during the lecture. Avoid that. 
Avoid talking when professor is delivering a lecture. Avoid doing homework when lecture is in progress. Avoid leaving class early during the lecture. Avoid using phone, internet, texting during the lecture. And complaining about issues for which a resolution pro procedure is already outlined in the course syllabus. These are, and finally, I have talked about this constantly in this class, creating an emotionally charged environment in the class. And this is so important in jobs that once working or not working depends upon this. Create an emotionally charged environment in the work and you're not working. Avoid that, chances are very high you, you'll keep working. I work for 33 years now. Okay, this is what I've learned. This is the most important lesson I can tell you, give you in this class. <clears throat> These are the winning behaviors. Be on time in the class. Fill up the front seats first. Ask questions for clarification. Of course, this requires concentrating on the course and the lecture. This requires concentrating on the course. Raise your hands to answer questions. Summary of these two is engage in the process of learning in the class. In any engagement, two parties have the responsibility, equal or slightly unequal, professor and student. I'm not saying professor does not have responsibility for making class engaging, they do. But the other party is the student. They should together work to make the class highly engaged, highly engaging. Continuing with the winning behaviors, give positive feedback to the professor that reflect your positive feelings about the course and professor's teaching, teaching methodology, style, examples, anything. You can give negative feedback also, but in gentle and objective terms. And rule there is give the negative feedback the way you would like to receive it. Okay, the way you prefer to receive negative feedback, use the same technique in giving it. Know your professor's name and know how to spell it. Uh, Dr. Landis in his book says, and I can vouch for that, I'm surprised how many students don't actually bother to know professor's name and how to spell it. How can you talk about who taught you what were taught in interviews if you don't even know a person's name? Okay. Understanding what your professors do, this is very important, it's part of the relationship. They teach and the teaching category includes not only classroom teaching, but also course and curriculum development, lab development, academic advising, and supervising students in research. These are all part of teaching. Research. Now understand, America is known worldwide for its top class research universities. America is the first country worldwide that built best research universities in the world. So a lot of professors do research. And the research includes creating and organizing new knowledge, disseminating new knowledge, publish the research papers, textbooks, softwares. They present research at the scholarly meetings. They participate in professional societies. 
and you know some of them ASME for mechanical engineering, IEEE for electrical engineering, etc. And they write proposals to get funds to support research that actually supports universities. So university professors do a lot of things that not only they're teaching and doing research, they're actually getting money for the university and helping university financially in a substantial way. Third category is service. This may include community involvement, participation in faculty committees, consulting, and a lot of other uh, activities. And each university requires professors to show competence and involvement in all three areas, teaching, research, and service. But amount may vary from one university to another. Like in community college, teaching is the main thing. In uh, research universities, research is the main thing. And service gets incorporated in different universities uh, to different levels. Okay. Next topic is communication with the professor. Okay. Communicating by email, these are the rules. Right from your college or university account. Include the course number in your subject line. Use an appropriate greeting. What to do when you get a reply. Things to avoid in next slide. Things to do in emails in the next slide. Things to avoid in emails. <clears throat> if something is serious, communicate that in person. Do not do that in email. Email is not one size fits all communication solution. It's a very, very limited media. It does not fit the bill for serious communication. Just remember in life, serious communication should always be face to face. Do not email unexpected attachments. Do not use emails to criticize severely anyone. Remember the rule about not creating an emotionally charged environment. Do not use emoticons, abbreviations, jargons, exclamation points. Signature line must have your name but not quotes from others. Do not write anything that you could not say face to face. And considering professor's time, Keep your demands reasonable. Example, letter of reference in next two days. If you write to professor, I need a letter of reference in next two days. That's more or less an impossible demand on professor's time. Each professor, just like any working professional, has a pipeline of activities, things to do. It may not be possible to jump your request ahead of everybody else that is already in the pipeline. This is a very important thing forgotten by a lot of students. <clears throat> Recommended things in email. Be clear, concise, and polite. I call this rule a CPP, clear, concise, polite, CCP. Before sending proof, before sending the email, proofread and correct what you wrote. When I write emails, I write them first in Microsoft Word to get grammar and spelling, etc. correct, and then copy and paste into email body. If you make this a lifelong habit, uh, you'll be very successful in email communication. Sign with your full name, course number, section number and class meeting times that helps professor to recognize exactly in which class you are
texting your professors ask professor if you can text them and please understand they may say no don't feel rejected if they do say no use texting for academic purpose mostly and as far as material of the text is concerned follow the same rule that we discussed for the email okay uh, another thing of about making the most of how you're taught is how to utilize campus resources we're going to talk about each resource and how you can use them academic resource center this could be tutoring writing skills center or studying skill center we can talk about tutoring tutors are an excellent source of one-on-one -on -one instruction whose importance we already discussed okay so professor time for one-on-one -on -one instruction limited but tutor time is more available so use that <clears throat> don't be resistant to seek tutoring try tutoring by look, looking at it in more positive light like an opportunity to have a dialogue with the person from whom you want to learn sometimes tutoring is learned through labs like math lab writing lab honor societies made on their own tutoring like tau beta pi so find out how it's being given and if free tutoring is not serving your needs well there is one option more expensive one you can hire a tutor whom you pay so. then you have library university library which has books textbooks periodicals online materials and a reference librarian who can help you search materials library can also hold seminars on how you can use all these resources it's your duty to find out when those talks and seminars are given The reference librarian to help you find material are available through phone, but in my opinion, a personal visit is most effective. There are computer labs in every campus which have application software, internet access. There may be training available on those. <coughs> academic advising this gives you help in reviewing your overall academic plan and your progress in following it as well as selecting the courses for the next term in community college that is done through counselors in university there are academic advisors there will be more information on academic advising in chapter 8 all the rules and regulations of college department curriculum requirement course descriptions are in university catalog that's your handbook on all the rules and regulations if you can read the electronic copy that's free to download if you need a paper copy uh, in some cases you have to purchase it for a small price registrar's office deals with your academic procedures changing majors dropping adding class enacting grade changes and transferring 
credits from other institutions. You should always find out what your campus offers, where these services can be found. And you can find them in catalog, web pages, and all the handbooks that are available. Freshman orientation will also help you to locate these services. And you can also find these services from your fellow students. Okay, so that's the rest of the chapter four. And for this class, Monday class, we consider that complete. And a homework on that will be posted in the assignment section of your Canvas course. Please look for that and complete it by the date listed there. Thank you so much from Dr. Singhal. Bye.